Well, U.S. airlines are also bearing the financial brunt of the coronavirus. The pandemic has brought the entire industry to a virtual standstill. Air travel has dropped as much as 95 percent since mid-March, and airlines could lose a quarter trillion dollars in revenue this year. Congress has tried to do its part to help. Lawmakers approved $58 billion in aid. $25 billion is to help airlines pay their employees. Another $25 billion is in the form of loans. And the remaining funds are for cargo operators. CBS News transportation correspondent Chris Van Cleve joins me now from Washington. Chris, you know, I want to ask you about United Airlines CEO Oscar Munez. He delivered really stark warning to employers earlier this week. There was a letter. He hinted there would be layoffs down the road. Is it safe to say that this industry will still feel the lingering effects of the pandemic for a very long time? Absolutely. You know, it, it Delta's CEO in a letter today said he expects recovery to take three years. Uh, other analysts have said it could be 2025 before you see the airlines back to pre-coronavirus flying and fortune, uh, if you will. Uh, the United CEO basically was saying, and, and other airlines, including Delta, have echoed this, that uh, as they emerge from this period of government funding, which which basically helps them with payroll through September 30th, that they are going to be a much smaller airline on the other side of that and that they will likely require fewer people. Uh, so that is, that's the hint at, at the potential for layoffs. Now, some of the unions have said this payroll protection, uh, the six months, gives them time to figure out things like uh, early retirement opportunities for some workers. Uh, all of the airlines have encouraged people who can to take unpaid leave of absence anywhere from one to six to 12 months. Um, some of those things may work to also preserve jobs. But uh, certainly the, the possibility, if not the uh, very clear likelihood of staffing reductions at the airlines still is on the horizon. You know, you're talking about a 95 percent decline in demand. Delta expects their revenues to drop by 90 percent in the second quarter compared mm. to last year. Uh, there's just no way that an airline that's operating at 10 or 20 percent of what it was three months ago needs 100 yeah. percent of its staffing. Yeah, and it's a good point, especially with concerns of a second wave this fall. I am sure everyone is a little anxious about travel at this point. But, you know, Chris, the airline industry has gone through 9-11. They've dealt with a 2008 financial crisis. How is this pandemic different from these situations that we've seen in the past? It's exponentially worse. Uh, in fact, uh, the U.S. Travel Association yesterday um, estimated that the impact overall in the travel industry will be nine times that of 9-11 when it comes to financial impact. Following 9-11, airlines saw about a 35 percent decline in travel. They're seeing a 95 percent decline in demand right now. So it is substantially worse than 9-11. It is worse than 2008-2009. The lessons from both 2001 and 2008-2009 is that air traffic did recover. It took years. Um, and the airlines are confident that people will want to travel again, be that to see family, to take vacations, or when business travelers come back. Business travelers are the bulk of the major airlines' business, you know, for one of the legacy carriers, American, Delta, United. Uh, frequent flyers are about 13 percent of the flying population and about 65 percent of the revenue. So that's key for recovery for the, the major airlines, for the leisure carriers. People need to be need to feel comfortable to take vacations again, need to be in an economic place where they yeah. can take a vacation again. So recovery is going to be dictated, I think, on a couple of things. One, what does the coronavirus landscape look like? How comfortable are people with the idea of getting back onto an airplane? You know, there was a, uh, I got, was sent a picture today of a, of a fairly full American Airlines flight, and that's really the exception to the rule. That plane was 75 percent full. Uh, typically, the airlines are flying about 15 percent full, but that flight, for whatever reason, was particularly busy. Um, and that weirded some people out. You know, how comfortable will people be mm. to get 172 people inside a 737 again? Um, that that yeah. sort of comfort level is going to be a big factor in what recovery looks like. And then the economy. Yeah. Do businesses resume traveling? And if so, when? And when do people feel like they have the discretionary yeah. income to go vacation again? Yeah. You know, that's such a great point that I hadn't thought of, Chris, that it's not just the health component to this, but the economic impact of people who are filling it in their pocketbooks might not be able to, to do that kind of travel. I do want to ask you before you go, that when you look at big picture, by the end of April, the U.S. Travel Association says that the travel 
will cause 8 million jobs to be cut. That is such a huge number. If at all, when do you think the federal government might pass some additional aid package or money for the industry? Do you see that coming as well? So the Travel Association was looking not only at airlines, but hotels, rental cars, uh, sort of that whole trickle effect. Um, you know, I think the federal government has deemed the airlines are essential. Even though they're not filling up with passengers, they are moving a lot of cargo. They are flying first responders. United has flown almost 300 doctors and nurses to New York and California to, and, and to other coronavirus hotspots. The other airlines are doing that, and they're doing that for free. Um, so they have dubbed the, the air service essential. They believe it is essential to economic recovery. The question becomes, do you support all of the U.S. airlines if you're going to do this uh, further uh, aid package? Um, and how do you structure it so that it doesn't overwhelm the airlines with debt? I, I think there is a real possibility that when this is over, you see fewer U.S. airlines than we started with. Uh, and a, a second package, there may be pressure for the, air, for the, for the government to essentially start picking winners and losers here. You know, do you need, do you need a leisure wow. carrier over a legacy carrier, that kind of thing? And, um, you know, if demand really stays at 10% of what it was, that's not a business model the airlines can weather, at least not all of them. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And, and things like this coronavirus pandemic, uh, the impacts and the implications it's having across the business sector. I want to thank you very much, Chris, for joining us. Sure thing.